Right now on WHAS 11 News at noon, Joseph and Steve Lawson back in court in Bardstown. What's expected in today's proceedings in the murder case of Crystal Rogers. Plus tense moments for Hardin County residents. An armed man escapes police on the interstate and takes off through a cornfield. How they were able to track him down. And later, a study by the University of Louisville uncovers decades of discrimination against residents and abuse. Everything LMPD is still trying to correct. Thanks so much for joining us here on your Friday during our noon show. We are joined by meteorologist Reed Yaden, who decided what better day to get out to the pumpkin patch at Galrine Farms in Shelby County. Reed, it's a beautiful afternoon out there. You just said it all. It is beautiful here. Welcome to the noon hour here, and I hope you're able to get out today and enjoy some of this great fall weather that we have. We're here in Shelby County. Wow, the place is crawling, as you can see around here. It's pumpkin time. It's fall. What a beautiful day for it. Now, we do have some changes we'll be detailing in a few minutes, but right now, let's check temperatures on max one. It is very comfortable. The humidity is comfortable. Breeze is going to be kicking up a little this afternoon out ahead of a frontal boundary. And we'll discuss that with you in detail when we come back in just a few minutes with the complete weather. We're well into the 70s now. Otherwise, you get outside the uh, immediate metro temperatures in the 60s. But just a nice afternoon all around the viewing area. I think the clouds will be on the increase. There's your temperature progression. We top out in the low 80s today. 20% shower chance, really, really small. I wouldn't worry about that a great deal. It should not be interfering with tonight's football games in the area. But we'll detail all of that for you coming up. Also, let you know what to expect for your fall weekend. Brooke, I'll see you in about 15 minutes from right now. Reed, thank you. In the next two hours, the father and son charged in the death of Crystal Rogers are expected back in court. Stephen Joseph Lawson are charged with conspiracy to commit murder and tampering with evidence in the Bardstown mother's 2015 death. We expect Steve Lawson's attorneys to say whether or not they've received all the necessary documents from his former attorney, Ted Lavitt, who Lawson fired back in August. Just a few weeks ago, attorneys accused him of withholding those files. If Lavitt hasn't provided the documents, he would need to attend to Today's hearing to provide an explanation to the judge. No hearings today in the federal retrial of former LMPD detective Brett Hinkison. Thursday, two Metro Police officers who were there during that raid on Brianna Taylor's home in 2020 took the stand. LMPD Sergeant Brandon Hogan was one of the last witnesses called by prosecutors. He responded to the scene after Taylor was shot and said he didn't see how an officer could have shot into that building given the circumstances. The defense then called LMPD detective Mike Nobles, who used a battering ram to break open Taylor's front door. Nobles told prosecutors he would not have fired the shots Hankison did. Corpse pick up on Monday with Hankison himself set to testify. The case is expected to go to jury sometime next week. In the next hour, an Alabama man who led Kentucky State Troopers on a multi-county chase will go before a Hardin County judge. Police said 26-year-old Ja'Cory King wrestled with an officer during a traffic stop and later hit speeds of 130 miles an hour during that chase. It started as a chase near Bowling Green, Kentucky and continued north on I-65 into Hardin County before police say the man crashed his car in Glendale near that new Blue Oval SK battery plant. He then took off on foot before surrendering some three hours later. Our Clarice Shaley and photojournalist Aspen Hester were there. The small town of Glendale busy with traffic. Big trucks off the interstate passing through. I-65 was closed as Kentucky State Police and others hunted for a man called armed and dangerous. I kind of felt like it was all contained. And it all started with a traffic stop in Bowling Green where state police say a man wearing black clothing fled in a vehicle traveling north. That man wrecking around Glendale, then running off into cornfields. People out and about two miles away from the search area. While Kentucky State Police warned people the suspect was armed. You know, like most of us, we kind of keep ourselves safe. We got, you know, we got measures around to keep ourselves safe. So, yeah, it's not that big of a deal. Battery plant Blue Oval right at the interstate put their campus in lockdown while the search continued. The Whistle Stop restaurant in Glendale staying open, watching for more information to come in. Had a couple of the servers a little concerned about it just due to the fact that social media had a big play on everybody finding out. Until the suspect was arrested. Looks like they actually just found him. 
him. Did they? <laughs> Great relief in Glendale. Clarice Shaley, WHAS 11, on your side. Ja'Cory King is expected in court at 1 o'clock this afternoon. More renovations are on the way for Churchill Downs. In addition to the work on the Starting Gate Pavilion already underway, the track will begin a series of projects to the sections closer to the finish line. It's expected to take three to four years, and we're told the plan is to start with the Sky Terrace Suite, which it plans on taking down and replacing. These projects will replace over 10,000 existing seats that currently consist of uncovered box seats and dated dining areas with approximately 16,000 seats representing a variety of premium hospitality experiences. Churchill said these projects will considerably increase the amount of seating at the track. A recent report on LMPD's history of policing in Louisville is racing, can raising concerns. In short, the U of L's report said the history is not good, so LMPD held a town hall to address these issues with the community. Our Alexander Goldberg and photojournalist Elijah McKenzie were there. Okay, that's the Civilian Review Board. Julina Frierson had a lot she wanted to discuss at the LMPD Town Hall in the California neighborhood. So she scribbled it all down. So it's a lot of stuff on here. Uh... But she wasn't happy, hoping to see more people engage in the conversation, including rank and file officers. If you don't have the participation, real participation from the community and the the police on the ground, this is just not going to work. There to face it all was the new police chief, Paul Humphrey, also addressing a lengthy UofL study that looked back at centuries worth of racial discrimination and abuse at the hands of local police. I need to be able to explain to officers what's going on with their department and the decisions that are being made just as much as I need to be able to explain that to the community so that they're comfortable with doing those types of things. Also coming soon, the U.S. Department of Justice consent decree and its oversight of 35 required changes. Humphrey says he hasn't lost focus on violent crime. Ultimately, if we want to talk about community safety, the number one priority is keeping people alive. And when you have 150 plus people being shot and killed, and another 300 plus people being shot, those are families that are torn apart. But moving forward, Frierson says change will only happen from the ground up. How many police? 1,200 police? It's got to come up from them and from us. In Louisville, Alexander Goldberg, WHAS 11, on your side. Chief Humphrey also said he expects to have more events like these in the future. Right now, Metro Police are investigating a cockfighting ring in Louisville after they said an anonymous video tipped them off to it. Joel Garcia and Raul Alsina have been charged with multiple counts of cruelty to animals over in Valley Station. According to court documents, police were sent an anonymous video showing two men making two roosters fight. These are photos from LMPD where officers said they found 14 birds on the property sparring mitts and fighting birds, weighted leg wraps, and a dummy rooster used to train the birds. Both suspects are expected back in court next month.